Okay, hello. Let's try to convert floating decimals. Floating point decimals. Floating decimals. Floating point decimals to 16-bit binary. Okay, how do we do this exactly? Well, there are steps. Suppose we're given 5.75 and I'm using this because this is the example given in the slides. We have three steps, I think. First, we need to deal with this. Let's convert that to binary. Then we need to also know the rules for converting the floating point part of our binary representation. And the third step, the third and last step would be for us to place it in our 16-bit container. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16-bit 16 container. By the end of the process, that should contain the 16-bit representation of 5.75. So let us begin. First step here. We know that 5, in order to convert it to binary, we need continuous division. So let's do exactly that. 5 divided by 2 is 2, remainder 1. 2 divided by 2, this, this 2 now becomes our new thing to divide. 2 divided by 2 is 1, remainder 0. This 1 is not yet 0, so we continue dividing. 1 divided by 2 is equal to 0 remainder 1 this part is already 0 we have reached 0 so we stop dividing so stop and then we just read all the remainders in the reverse order that we were able to get them this gives us the binary representation of 5 so this 5 right here it's already this one great we are done with step 1 step 2 if the whole number you continuously divide it the floating point part is something we continuously multiply by 2 in order to get the binary representation we take note of two things one is the whole number component as a result of this multiplication so 0.75 times 2 is 1.50 we have two things to take note of here let me just use my blank ink to draw a line okay we stop with this process when what you can see here in in the y column the column for the for the floating point part for the decimals part is already zero but if it's not we just continue with the multiplication by two using whatever is in the y column as the new thing you need to multiply to two so for example while it's not yet 0, my new given would be 50. I multiply it by 2, I get 1.00. Since this is already 0, then I stop. I stop with my conversion and then read the values in the x column, the whole numbers from top to bottom. This gives me my representation for for the floating point part so if i try to combine these two i get 101 101.11 as my um as my uh partial representation for this particular floating point number by convention we need to use scientific notation and say this whatever value i find here it's multiplied by 2 raised to the zero of power before we can transfer it to the 16-bit container we must first um organize this a little bit and by organize we mean try to put the decimal point here to the leftmost portion and if we do that step by step we will see that it affects the exponent of 2 because we are trying to traverse from right to left. If we move the decimal point again, 1.0111 1 times 2 raised to the second power, put it at the leftmost corner, 0 0.10111 times 2 raised to the third power. Okay, 
at this point when the decimal point is now on the leftmost part we are ready to transfer to the container but we need to take note of specific things to facilitate our transfer so let me just rewrite it again this one is called or the space here is the sign if we happen to get a negative number then we know this is going to be negative 0.101 but now that it's positive the rule is if it's positive then it's a zero the first bit should be a zero if it's negative the first bit should be one so let's just place it here for it to be represented since our number is a positive number then we place zero here we're done with the first bit this one the number that is to the right of the decimal point you call this your mantisa this is now the representation the prop the, the, the representation proper of your number so we just use the nine bits that follow the bit for the sign so one two three four five six seven eight nine we just transfer it there one zero one 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 and then fill up the other spaces with zeros next thing that we do is take note of of the sign the, the the sign of the exponent if it's positive or negative same rule if it's positive then it's zero if it's negative then it's a one since it's positive we can safely just put zero here and of course the last five the last five one two three four five the last bits the last five bits would contain the binary representation of your exponent not the sign the binary represent the the binary the bi the, the binary representation of the exponent mismo so this is a three converted to binary so it's um and i'll not anymore do this let me just say that three is zero one one because two raised to zero two raised to one this is one this is two plus one equals three so we put this here by saying zero one one and then the others you can just put zeros on them okay so that's how you convert your floating point decimals to 16-bit binary thank you for watching again consult the slides for the details of the theories behind the process that i've shown you